Okay, we're going to look at uh, using a definite loop and a nested loop to create a multiplication table. Um, show you my cat. He's here helping me. Rio. That's Rio. Okay. Uh, so he might be... Well, let's see if he settles in. Okay, sorry. Um, I digress. So use a loop to list the first 12 multiples of 2, 2 through 24, tab separated. Um, again, not a whole lot of design here. I mean, one thing we could think about is, you know, how can we first just print the first 12 multiples of 2? So, you know, maybe um, instead of worrying about tab separating them or, um, you know, the the entire problem maybe we just first try to just print the first 12 multiples of 2 2 4 6 8 10 down to 24 so you know the iterative process says maybe i just try this first can i do that so let's try that first okay so we're gonna shrink myself down a little bit and get rid of this and I'm done with this keeps list for now, so I'll close it, save it, sure. Make a new, so again, I'm in, I'm in chapter two, I'm in my source code, I'm in my default package. I'm gonna make a new class. Um, oh, it doesn't know where it is. So this is, you know, it didn't, it didn't keep track of where we were, so you can just open that up, hit the source code. I could tell it the package here if I want. Um, name is gonna be multiplication table. Again, the name of the class always starts with a capital letter. It doesn't have to, but this is just by convention. Everyone then knows it's a class as opposed to a method, and those names are all going to start with lowercase letters. Generally, variables to start up the first word with a lowercase. Okay, public static mo void. Just have one function in this method in this class. Our main. Go back through our comments. See, it's gotten much darker out. So, I'm, if you're watching these in order, I'm getting tired. See more typos and things. Um, that happens to you guys as well. You know, when we get a little tired, we get we start making mistakes. So, um, this is actually a two part problem. So, part one is um, use definite loop. That's the point of the problem. Loop to print. The first 12 multiples of 2, and I'm going to say tab separated, or separated by tabs. And that'll be at part 2 here, which we'll fill in in a few minutes. Okay, I hit it. I'll get rid of that white space. Okay, so loop for integer again i'm going to use i for index i is going to start at one the first multiple of two is two times one i is going to go up to and including 12. Uh, i seem to like 12 in this set of problems and then we're going to increase i by one each time we go through the loop so there's our loop header or our loop declaration and we'll hit an open brace hit return it'll generate the closed brace you can just do a double check here that my main is ending down there and my class is ending down here. Perfect. Okay. So inside here, we're just going to print uh, let's do a print line statement. I just want to print the desired multiple of two. So that's going to be two times i. Again, this is sort of the step-by-step -step process or an iterative process. I don't have to worry about the um tab separated initially i just want to make sure my loop is working my loop ran 12 times and i printed the first 12 multiples of two okay but instead of printing them down i want to print them across so i don't want to use a print line statement i want to use a print statement um you know one thing we could do here is we could just add a space and that would print them straight across now what that doesn't do is it doesn't tab separate them 
And the reason I want to tab separate them is I want to look at the multiples of, I want the spacing between all the numbers to be the same. So, you know, if I, if I, if I use spaces, um, when we get down to fives and we have a two digit number as our second multiple, then all the numbers will be out of, out of alignment. Maybe I'll show you that in a few minutes. So instead of having a space here, we want to put a tab backslash. And there's two through 24 tab separate. I had to make it a little bigger so they would show. Okay, perfect. Um, and then in general, you don't want to end. So if anything's going to print after this, it's going to print right after that 24. That's where my cursor would lie. I generally don't want to print there. I want to start printing on the next line. So I would want to print line statement after this loop. Now, you can't really see that it does anything. Um, so maybe I could put a test in here. Print statements can be helpful for testing stuff. Let's put my name there, see what happens. Um, John now printed on the next line. If we don't have that, John's going to print after the 24. Notice. There's this extra tab floating here. So that potentially could be a problem. Um, it's not going to matter in this problem, but that's one thing we call, it's called a fence post problem. It, we have one, one extra tab. The way to fix that is to, to, to stop the loop early, run the loop 11 times, and then print the 24 by itself. Um, we won't worry about that in this problem because we can have a tab at the end. It doesn't affect us as long as I put this print line statement after it. Okay, so I want to get rid of John. Bye bye. I want to go back to the notebook and look at the second part of the problem. Use a loop to list the first 12 multiples of two. We've done that. They're tab separated. We've done that. So we started going down. Now we got them going across by adding the backslash T. And then we printed a print line statement after that. The next thing to print would be below this two. Scroll down, use nested loops to print the first 12 multiples of 2 through 12, each on a separate line. So now we want to start at 2, 2 through 24, and then 3 through 36, 4 through 48, all the way down to from 12 to 144. So this is what, what we would have as a nested loop. And just going to pause for one second. Okay, so you know, as I was thinking about this problem, you know, it, it's it's a little complicated because we're two things are going to twelve. So what's going to twelve here? From one to twelve, that's how many multiples of two we have. Or another way to think of it is the columns. We have twelve columns here: column one, column two, column three, up to column twelve. So back on our code over here, our pseudo code, I could um, come on, pen. Oh, so I was using my green pen instead of using my, I'll show you. I have a green pen and I'm using it, the, my, my tablet to draw in green. So, you know, for the columns, one to 12. So for the columns one to 12, what do we wanna do? We wanna print the multiples of first of two, then of three, then of four, down to 12. So now this becomes a second loop for the multiples, and they start at two to 12. And then we're going to make a print statement here. And what are we going to print? We're going to print the column times the multiple or whatever the, the, fat, the, the thing that we're taking the multiples of. So in that first column, it's going to print, uh, you're going to be column, I have it backwards. I have this backwards. We want the columns to range across the multiples. So this 
is backwards. For each multiple, two up to 12. And now for each column, one to 12. So we want to start with two, print 12 multiples of two. Jump to three, print 12 multiples of three. Um, let's erase that stuff. And then, so then we'll print here. So this is the pseudocode. This is happening on paper. The multiple times the column. And again, it's tab separated. So now we'll go implement that. So I'm gonna change this guy to say column. These are the columns. So, you know, it might, it might actually be easier to just leave that alone and maybe we'll comment that out, all of it. Hey, so not, I'm not, I was trying to do this automatically. Um, it, it, just, I'm just gonna leave it for a second. I'll come back and, and fix it in a minute. Just leave it for now. So our, our second set of loops is gonna say four. Again, it's gonna be an integer, but now I'm gonna call it column. And the columns are gonna run from one up to and including 12. Nope, sorry, starting with multiples. Go back to my pseudocode. Multiples from two to 12. The multiple is going to start at two. And I'll just use the variable name multiple up to 12. And it's going to increase by one. So again, multiple plus plus. Now, inside this loop, we need another loop, or it's called a nested loop. And in this loop, integer column is going to start at one. And again, go up to and including 12. And then we need another open brace. So notice my braces. I have one for the inner loop, one for the outer loop. OK, and then inside the inner loop, we're going to have a print statement where we're printing column. Now let's go multiple times column. And then again, I want to add a tab in between them, backslash T. So that is going to print across when the multiple is 2, 2 through 24. But then I want to go to the next line to print 3 through 36. So outside of the inner loop, there's the inner, we call it the inner and the outer loop. After the inner loop runs, I want to reinstate this print line, an empty print line statement to make sure I go down the page. Okay, and I'm going to go back up to this original print line up here, and I'm going to say part two. Um, so that you can see the difference between part one and part two. Maybe we go back up before this, and we, we add a print line in st statement here. Call it part one. It's 
scroll back up. Oh, what happened to my part two? Oh, I, I know, I see what happened. <laughs> so part one, it printed two through 24, but look where it printed the part two, over there. So I need, before I print part two, I need another print line, empty print line statement to get me to that next line. And again, this is illustrating for us that um, when you end, end a print, when you, when you have print statements that are ending with tabs here, the, the next person who comes along to code is expecting their thing to print on the next line, this part two. So that's where this print line statement is important there. Okay, so there's our first loop, followed by a print statement, and then part two is down here. Let's maybe group these a little better. Here's part one, here's part two, the nested loop for multiples from two to 12, for columns from one to 12, it's inside that loop. We're printing multiple times column with a tab. And then after that inside loop, we have another print line statement that gets us to the next line. And then we'll run it one more time, see it happen. Make my console a little bigger. Part one, maybe I should even have another print line statement after this 24, right? Separate it down a little bit. And then here's my, here's my multiple table, my multiplication table. And notice, you know, right here when it goes to 10, or even here at 12, when, when one's one digit, the other is two digits, that's why I used tabs so that everything was lined up. Um, in the right place. Okay, good. So I want to do one more thing, and that's to add in a print statement here before part two. Um, what I can do in this empty print line statement is just rather than add, I could add another print statement, or I could print a backslash n in a print line statement. So that'll print an empty line, and then the print line will take it to the next line. So you can see that creates an empty space there, which is nice. Okay, maybe I can get this code to show the whole thing. There it is. And I should, I should also go back to my comment and fill in what um, part two was. Use nested loops to print multiplication table. With multiples, with 12 multiples of two through 12. And then I'll, maybe I'll close those comments out and there's my code in total. And we'll use a lot of nested loops, especially early on, just to kind of get the idea of, you know, this is probably the first time you've done this kind of thing where your, 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 your variable name in the loop relates to the output or to what's going on in the problem. Um, it's fine to use I and J when we're literally just like up here, we're just looping 12 times and the I is just standing by for which multiple of two. But down here, when we're dealing with a nested loop, if, if we start using I and J and K and L and M, it gets very confusing. So that's where you want to use variable names that the reader or the next coder who comes along to modify your code can tell what you're doing. And that logic did not happen here. It happened over here on paper. All right, good work.